And uh, with that, let's uh, move into some breaking news that uh, six very helpfully found behind the scenes here. Tom, well, you that is Toxic up? Man Flu? Is Toxic Man Flu in the chat? Because he's got to add another one to the list of dead series. Uh, we have lost a lot of series this year, and we won't miss them. And here's another one we won't miss. Willow is canceled after one season on D+. Wow. And nobody is surprised. Sorry. Hmm. This was a travesty. So, bye. So, guess what, kids? We're not getting that second season they supposedly kept talking about. You mean the ones that, like, the cast and crew were, like, really championing and trying to get? Because they thought, oh, yeah, we'll get Val Kilmer in the second season, probably. <laughs> in a wheelchair. When we don't have to kill him to get him in the show, they kept saying, yeah. The, we've had good news twice today. This is all, this is one of them. The other one was that they are ending the League of Their Own divisive. Yes, crap cast I mystery. brought that up to Tox last night too. Culture. I'm like, add another one to the list. Yeah. League of Their Own also died. Um, but yeah, on this note, Willow. I don't think anybody's sad to see this one go. I felt I, I felt personally attacked by this show. <laughs> to be fair, a little bit. Get it a little bit. Came up short. Yeah, that was better. <laughs> nice one. That's a very, very classy. So, yeah. Uh, Nobody Mr. cares. Chuck, are, are you surprised that Willow will not be returning for another season? And did you catch any of the previous one? I did not see a single Willow. Neither did anyone else, and I think that may have been a problem. And those that did see it hated it and I stopped watched watching. Twenty minutes of it, the show should have been called Pussy Willow because that's what it was more about. Was it's it's so funny that him, yeah. the they I don't know they're they're managing to promote these shows in such a way that I immediately go, "Wow, I'm not interested." That that's that does not bode well for any kind of uh, a competent marketing division. Well, I don't understand the why the producers would see a cut of the trailer for something like this and go, wow, this totally embodies every single thing that we believe in the show, and this is going to be great, and people are going to love it. They must be deluded. Yes. <laughs> Again, marketing in, in Hollywood is the laziest of the lazies. Like They just don't know how to do it anymore. But not, not just that. I can envision, this is another whole discussion, mm -hmm. is that they make a cut based on the political aspects of the show that they've created and going, and they're going to go, wow, this show is going to change the world. This, this cut of this uh, trailer is so satisfying. I love it. And then they're shocked when people hate it. I don't understand. Well, I mean, they're sniffing their own poos is what's happening. Well, when you have a bunch of narcissists who are the ones running the show, Correct. When you have people who are, who have been so completely brainwashed that they genuinely believe that they are saving the world, that they are saving the lives with this series. It's literally a cult mentality that they have. And, of course, then when they have surrounded themselves with people inside of a bubble who all think this is the most amazing thing ever, and they've never seen anything, these are young, inexperienced writers who somehow think that what they are producing is up there with the best of Game of Thrones and Sopranos and The Shield and what have you, and it just isn't. But it's so important because my diversity and representation... And then it's rejected by the audience, and they are shocked, and they beg and plead in the press for a season two, and it just ain't happening, because no one is watching. Utterly shocked. I am shocked. Uh, so are they, and they're genuinely shocked. That's the difference. And uh, but also there's like a larger implication here because yeah this is like another one bites dust but you know what also is going on here this is yet another Lucasfilm show that failed it's not just Willow this is another failure attributed to Kathleen Kennedy so this is bad news even in that camp I mean script 
I, I'm curious, like, what do you think the reception in the industry is going to be on this and to Kathleen Kennedy's legacy? Because here is now yet another failure. There's not that many brands that Lucasfilm has. Like, I mean, what is it? I mean, it's Star Wars, it's Indiana Jones, and it's Willow. It's also Escape and from Star the Wars Island. On the drain, and now... Uh, Willow just went down the drain as well, so all they really have left at this point is Indiana Jones. So by the time she leaves, well, she may have tanked the entire company and all of their assets. Well, no, because there's still a few assets that Lucasfilm has that you know are dormant, but they're there. Well, that is Maniac Mansion, Escape from Monkey Island. Um, they're they're not going to do anything with those because they probably aren't aware of them. I was going to say what? Like I've never <laughs> even. Well, again, those. that's because the other three were were quite more popular. So, uh, would, a legendary say, adventure game, but uh, that the, that would be like the perfect sign of desperation. Next, coming from the studio that destroyed Star Wars, <laughs> Willow, and Indiana Jones, we give you Monkey's Island because it's all we have left. I, well, the I thing is, is that Monkey that Island was a very popular game, and they'd been trying to make an adaptation of that for a very long time, but they just never found, uh, you know, the the sweet spot, so to speak. Um, but I would say publicly, no one's going to say anything bad about Kathleen Kennedy. But behind closed doors, you'll probably have people commenting like, "I can't believe that they botched that. How did they do it? Like, is it Ridley KK's fault, or is it uh, just the politics at Disney?" There'll be a lot of rumor and speculation and conjecture. But it'll never be done publicly. And, and the reason being is that it doesn't matter how many failures Kathleen Kennedy has, the position she, she holds right now it kind of makes her immune to that at this point. And because of the political climate of Hollywood, they she is she can't be held accountable for it um, without her being able to uh, mobilize uh, the news media to her defense and thus hurt the reputation of whatever company tries to say, you don't understand. She, she screwed up. She mismanaged. We shouldn't be revering her just because she's a woman and has all this experience and these connections to, to some of the, the greatest uh, talent in, in the industry. Uh, she clearly didn't utilize their knowledge or their skills to help make us good product. They'll, they'll never say that in this climate. They might've been able to say that maybe 20 years ago, <laughs> but not today, not now, sadly. There you go. So Willow will not be missed <laughs> by anybody, I don't think, except for maybe Warwick Davis and the rest of the cast. Ron it would be as uh, legendary as Highlander nah, too. He's, he's, yeah, no, Ron Howard's retiring. We were told that yep. by his brother way back when. Yeah. So, and all of it is exactly happened as he said it was. So. Yeah. Uh, so with that, Andre, was there any uh, super chats that had to do with uh, Willow? Let's see here. None. <laughs> uh, but speaking of Lucasfilm, there is one about Indiana Jones from All Off Van Ness, who sends in two euros. 